Good morning, my little babies. I've gone into my collection, and this is a favorite book of mine. It's called Songs of My People. It's African Americans, a self-portrait. And it has an introduction by the late Gordon Parks, the famous photographer. So in this book, you will find many pictures of how we lived in the early century. Uh, if you can go to the library and get this book, I suggest that you need to look back and wonder how we got over. We have survived. Our enemies was not ourselves. Our enemy was people who wanted to see us dead. So I think if you can go and get this book, African Americans, A Self-Portrait, it will help you understand where we came from. Beautiful photography in here. Um, and God knows where we're going. But uh, as I say, and Dr. King said, we as a people will reach the promised land. I want to thank everybody who wrote me again and asked me all the different questions. I'm very happy to meet all my newly adopted grandchildren whose grandparents have passed on and they have adopted me now because they say they like the way I tell it like it is. That's the problem. Um, the older people are not setting an example for the young people. You know, my mom told me when I was growing up, she says, Judy, your child or your children will not love you or pay attention to you because of what you say. It's what you do. And if you live a messy life, when they get some size, they're going to throw that messy life into your face. You might think they're little and they don't know what's going on. They know what's going on when they see all them different men coming in and out your door. Cut it out, ladies. Cut it out. Some of you, your grandparents, your grandmama was that way, your grandfather was that way, so you don't know no other way. Set a good example for your children. And the only advice I can give my beautiful people in Chicago is get the hell out. Because nobody, they want you to be killed. Because they could do something about this. I have written from the president on down. I've had friends of mine to write. And nobody's doing anything. It's like they don't care if you kill each other. They're probably somewhere cracking up about the body count. And you got to realize some of these guys that's doing the killing are probably were crack babies. So they don't have any brains anyway. So who's giving them all these guns? They'll pick up a gun and shoot a brother, but they will not pick up a book and try to educate themselves. There's an author called Kun Jufar Kanufa. I, I forgot his name. It's, I told you, Grandma has a hard time with these new names. Kan Kanufa or something like that. I'll, I'll, I'll find it out and tell you. But he talks about the destruction of black boys, the miseducation of the Negro. I mean, Grandma don't have to spoon feed you all of this. You know that there's a problem. Someone asked me one time, Judy, how did you like Montana? Because I told them that I had gone to Montana. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Montana is beautiful especially the Glacier National Park. I rode that little red bus that you can take up to the park and back. Um, yes, it's 99 and 44, 100% white. And some of them have written to me and said, we want to keep it white. But I want to tell you this. The reason they feel that way is because of some of our behavior. And I want to tell you about Montana. They can carry guns there. So they don't have the crime that we have. Because people aren't going to shoot you down if they think that you're going to be, they can, someone can shoot you back. 
uh, far as myself personally, they were very nice to me. I stayed in a town called Kalispell, K-A-L-I-S-P-E-L-L, -L, Kalispell, like you spell your name. Montana, it's up close to, uh, what do you call it, the um, Canadian border. I also went to a town 12 miles from Kalispell called Whitefish. The people were very friendly toward me. I didn't find any prejudice. The only prejudice I really got was in emails. That's because I went to the libraries and everything. And I went twice. I went the first year and then I went back and rented a house and stayed there a month. Uh, they're really afraid of black people there. I have to honestly tell you that. And I'm an old black person, but I think they probably think I'm going to bring some of my grandsons that's going to contaminate the place. Now, don't think they little white kids are all that perfect. They have problems there, too, you know, just like everybody else. But it's just something about our skin color that's, that's scary. And I would tell you, I wouldn't recommend you going up there if you're going to come up there with their foolishness because they will shoot you as soon as look at you. So that's what someone asked me about Kalispell and about Montana. But I have to say, some of the people call me from Montana. We're friends. In fact, I'll probably go there every August. Uh, Montana, it snows a lot there. So oh, it's beautiful mountains. I mean, you can go see it. It's right on the Internet, YouTube. Beautiful mountains, and you know, coming from Illinois, the mountains just really crack me up. I love them. Um, uh, beautiful sunsets, sunrises, waterfalls, grizzlies, mine pa grizzlies up there, uh, cougars, and everything. Another place that I visited, someone wrote and said they wanted me to talk about was Alaska. To me, Alaska looks like Montana's, uh, masculine side not trying to say montana's feminine but alaska's huge i even passed by Sal, uh, sarah palin's town because i took uh, my, my daughter and i flew up there to anchorage and then we took the uh, the train and all the alaskan trains are out of sight i love them love them love them huge to denali that's that mountain and I was lucky enough that we saw Denali that day. Uh, a lot of alcohol problems in Alaska. Not that many black people there either. Mostly the, uh, the Eskimos, I guess you would call them. I don't know what you call them. Native Alaskans. They really seem like they have a problem with the bottle. I mean, I didn't see that in Montana. People falling drunk all on the street. But I ate at the best restaurant in uh uh, Anchorage. It's called the Brew House. Never, they make beer there. Never, my daughter and I never tasted such wonderful food. That was in Anchorage. You gotta have a, 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 a reservation to come there. And you know, Grandma, I'm so mischievous. We had just got in town and they said that we couldn't be seated until 8 o'clock that night. So I went in there and I said, you know, I'm a little old lady. I mean, I play my little old lady card. I says, and I just got in from Chicago. I says, and I feel like I'll fall asleep in my food if I can't get an early reservation. So she said, well, let me see what I can do. So she looked. She said, we can seat you in about 10 minutes. So don't always go by what people say about reservations. Just play whatever role you can play. Pregnant lady, I couldn't have played that role. But old lady, uh, anything you can come up with, and it'll work. People were very friendly, very nice. Um, Alaska has a free senior citizen day where you ride the buses for free. Alaska also has a free uh, uh, different ages day that you can ride the bus that day. Free young people's day where you don't pay to ride the buses. But Alaska is huge. Do I want to live there? No. I went there in August and it was still some snow. Uh, my daughter loved it because she's the hiking person and, and all of that. So uh, that's it. South Dakota was another place that I went that I really, really loved. Rapid City. I went there about three times. That's where the Mount Rushmore statue is. So 
I'm glad. Oh, and some people said they want to see a picture of me when I was young. Well, I have to go dig out a picture, but I will try to get a picture of me. I used to wear my hair cut really, really short. And uh, since I got my first gray hair, white hair, really, at 31, I didn't want to look like my daughter's grandma. So I used to rinse it. But once she got 18, I didn't care. Let the white fly. So uh, it's how you feel inside. Not against anybody who want to dye the hair. Go do it. I mean, look at Ronald Reagan's wife. She's what in her 90s and her hair is just that same uh, brown. Whichever way you want to wear your hair, whatever you want to put on your head, that's your business. It's nobody else's business. We have more important things to worry about. and Because I think if every, every black woman decides she wants to shave her head, our men will still be complaining about something. So what they need to do, instead of worrying about what's on our hair and head, take care of these babies that you're putting out. But really, ladies, they can't put out the babies unless you're there to receive them. So uh, don't pay attention to the stuff these guys are telling you. And really, our little babies, our nine-year-olds, to, to I say at least 16, ladies, you got to really make sure they get vaccinated because they're not going to pay attention to you. I remember children having sex in the school uh in the hallways i mean those hormones are kicking in big time and as adults we're the ones who have to rein them in unless you don't know how to rein in yourself i have nothing against sex but personally myself i think it belongs in a committed marriage that's what i think and i think people should be monogamous but if you can't be it then don't marry look at tiger woods what, 25 different women? He didn't even use a condom? That's an idiot. So, uh, guys, uh, they said a man that cannot control the zipper on his pants cannot control a nation. So, control that zipper on your pants. Get a vasectomy. In fact, I think it'd be a good idea if maybe they give out free uh, Apple cell phones with uh, the two-year contract being paid if men would line up to get a vasectomy. Then you won't be shooting nothing but blanks, baby. I don't think it has, I'm not a man, but I don't think it has nothing to do with your your sexuality, but it means you won't be ha shooting babies. And then again, the women are stupid anyway who let you shoot these babies. You know, they, they're just dumb. That's all I have to say. And please don't write me like you and told me about your birth control failed. They got the morning after pill. Don't wait until you're almost seven months pregnant to go try to get an abortion. Uh, I remember one lady we just read about, she went to the abortion clinic that morning. She had her abortion, and then she went um, home, and she was bleeding profusely. And uh, they rushed her to the hospital, and she died that night. Well, she had killed her baby that morning, and she was dead that night. And I think she was about 22 years old. So abortions are not safe, lady. It's Abortion is murder. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. You go on and do it. I remember an old lady that died one time, and she was dying, and she saw these bloody, get those bloody spots out my face, ah, and her children was around her, and they says, Grandma, it's no bloody stuff running by. She says, yes, it is. It's all these children that I aborted. So I, everybody I've ever talked with, they've always talked about their abortions and how, and they started crying. So it's ab abortion is not birth control, ladies. As uh, Sexy Tina says, I love her saying about making things on 100. You make things on 100. And remember another thing, watch those venereal diseases. One girl had AIDS, uh, herpes, HIV, and she went to bed with this guy. Afterwards, she told him that she had it. And he went to the kitchen and got a butcher knife and killed her while her kids were at school. So um, HIV and AIDS are still out there, people, so be careful. Okay, Grandma went over longer than I wanted to today, but it's just some things I told you. God puts things on my mind what to say. So you know I love you. I, I've i got so many emails asking me so many questions that it's going to take me a while to uh, answer everything on this program. I love you very much. Be safe. Take care of yourself. And get the hell out of Chicago. <laughs>